is great. Amen. He, he really is. If you got your Bibles, turn to Hosea chapter 14. Hosea 14, while we're taking communion this morning. Communion is the remembrance of, of what our Lord did for us, uh, going to the cross for the forgiveness of sin, for the, the healing and restoration of not only our physical bodies, but for the body of Christ itself. Sometimes, somewhere along the way, we get a little off track from that. And in Hosea chapter 14, we're going to start in verse 1. It says, Return, O Israel, to the Lord your God, for you have stumbled because of your iniquity. And how many times have we found ourselves in a situation like that? Take words with you and return to the Lord. Say to him, Take away all iniquity and receive us graciously, that we may present the fruit of our lips. Assyria will not save us, we will not ride on horses, nor will we again say our God to the works of our hands. We've come to a place where we realize that there is absolutely no salvation for us except the Lord. For in you, the orphan finds mercy. For in you, the orphan finds mercy. You know, Jesus, he referred to the Pharisees and many of the ungodly in his days, and he says, you are of your father, the devil. How many of y'all remember when you were part of that family? Amen. And our father would abandon us at many times, especially when things got tough. And he would leave us to destruction. The orphan finds mercy. In Romans 8, verse 15, it says, For you have not received a spirit of slavery leading to fear again, but you have received a spirit of adoption as sons by which we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, heirs also, and heirs of God, and fellow heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, so that we may be also glorified with him. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be prepared with the glory that is to be revealed in us. God has mercy to the orphan. And we are part of that recipient of mercy. There are times in our lives when we just do wrong. And we find ourselves estranged from God. We find ourselves outside of the family that we desire to be, a, be in. And God, in His mercy, brings us back to Himself. It puts a spirit to testify that we are the children of God. And sometimes we, we experience suffering because of, of that disobedience. But I tell you what, the sufferings that we experience and the sufferings that come with repentance are nothing to be compared with the glory that's going to be revealed in us. Why? Because God has mercy on the orphans. So many times as we go through life, we, we forget that. When hard times come and when failures come, it's, it's hard to remember that we are part of the family of God. And we need the Spirit of God to remind us of that. And the Spirit of God rests where? The Spirit of God rests in us. So that's why it's important for us as a body of believers to be ministers of mercy and ministers of grace. When we see someone who's struggling, someone who's gone through a hard time to go to them and say, you know what, you're still part of the family. Let's go, let's, let's, let's go back to the Father. In Ephesians 1.5 it says, He predestined us to the adoption of, as sons through Jesus Christ according to the kind intention of his will. And that means that from the very beginning, it was God's desire for you to be part of his family. Irregardless of what you've done, irregardless of what you're going to do, God still wants you. Take advantage of that. Do not allow yourself to be defrauded because of something that the devil might tell you. 
Because we know that he's a liar. We know he can't be trusted. And he certainly does not have our best interest at heart. So this morning, I want to remind us, as we've already worshipped before, that our God is great. And not only is our God great, but he wants you. Amen. So this morning, Jesus said, take this bread. This is my body broken for you. Sometimes we feel ourselves broken and estranged from the body of Christ. You can have restoration this morning. You can have mercy and you can have grace. I want you to take, take a moment before we partake of this. And if you have found yourself maybe a little estranged from the body, to just simply say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, be merciful to me. Assyria can't help me. Chariots can't help me. I've, I've kind of come to the place where I realized that I cannot say God to the works of my own hands. They've all left me short. But Father, this morning, I reaffirm my faith in you. I reaffirm my confidence in you. I reaffirm the truth that you are the only true God. And I thank you for receiving me back. I thank you for, for pouring out your grace and your mercy upon me. And I do pray, Lord God, that you would help me to be an agent of mercy to others. So, Lord, as we partake of this wafer, Lord, I ask that you would allow it to strengthen us for that purpose in Jesus' name. Jesus said, this is the cup which, which represents his blood that is shed for the remission of sins. Um, forgiveness of sin is, is, is a crazy thing sometimes because it's not qualified by a certain rating system. He doesn't say, well, this sin is forgiven, uh, this sin is not forgiven, or this sin has a certain amount that you've got to deal with, this sin has less amount. Jesus' blood forgives us of sin, period. And not only does he forgive us of sins, but then he, he says, I'm, I'm just not going to bring it up anymore because it's done with. It's done away with. And one of the attributes of love in 1 Corinthians 13 is that you don't bring up the past. How many of y'all are glad that God loves you? <laughs> Amen. So this morning as we partake of this cup, Lord, we're, we're simply merciful orphans in need of mercy. We thank you, Lord God, that not only do you forgive us, but you don't rub our noses in it. You lift us up. You hold our hands high so that we can worship you and praise you. Help us, Lord, to do likewise to those that we come across in the name of Jesus. Lord, as we continue in our, in our worship, help us to remember that scripture in Hosea, to the, in you the orphan finds mercy. Especially as we run across those that uh, may ha maybe haven't been part of the family of God, but you're drawing them in. Help us to remember mercy. In Jesus' name.